So here let's begin on this subject matter that in this present time with the passing of Bongo Rocky, Congo Rocky, the Naibingi elder in Ethiopia on the 15th, there's the issue of where will he be laid to rest. And the request now has been or is being made or has already been made to the Ethiopian, the local Ethiopian church in the Shashimani area that they would bury and take care of the ritual of the dead for the Rastafari Naibingi elder Congo Rocky. I mean, when you think about it for a moment, it must bother you, and it should if you're conscious and you're aware that we don't have anything in place to handle such um, contingencies and such situations. And it should not be so if we are truly Rastafari. Because in this book, which is prefaced by His Imperial Majesty, the Fitta Neges, it, there's a 22nd chapter of the first part of the book that addresses this particular subject matter. So, as a sort of a requiem for Bongo Rocky, or Congo Rocky, as he's also known, the Nyabingi elder, we'd like to have this teaching and to share this teaching of his imperial majesty so that hopefully we would grow up as Rastafari and become mature and be able to, to handle and angle such situations and not have to, on one hand, you know, um, say one thing and then later on do something else. So, the 22nd chapter, the Fitta Neges Besam Ab, Wawel Wamen Feskdus, Ahadu Amlak, and it begins In the church, the Beta Christian, the house of the anointed ones, those who are called out from the world, you shall gather without laziness to read the holy books and say psalms for those who are asleep, such as the martyrs and former Kedusan or former saints, the Kedusan Kedamawiyan, the former saints or the Kedusan Gedamawiyan, the saintly monks who are asleep, and for your brethren who are asleep and were mitmanan or amanyoch or were faithful those who admitted in Exiene, in Adonenu, in Gietachin, in our Master. Offer for them in your Beta Christian the prayer of sacrifice, Meswa'it, which is his holy body and his precious blood, to the King of Heaven. Offer it to say farewell to the one who sleeps. Pray for the one who is asleep by walking before his buyer, his bear, his buyer, the palaquin, and say psalms. If he was faithful to Christos, to the Mushi, the anointed one, the prophet Dawit or David has said, Precious before Adonai, before Yahweh, is the death of his Kedusan, of his saints. He also said, Turn, O my soul, to thy rest, for Adonai, for Yahweh, has been bountiful to thee. So this is, this is one bait, this is one paragraph. We want to pause here so we can go over this and put this into to context. Is this something that is too hard for Rastafari to do for our loved ones, our beloved ones, for the martyrs of Rastafari, for the holy ones, the Isla ones of Rastafari, for our brethren who are not dead according to the fit and the guess in the worldly sense of dead, but who are asleep, who sleep. So we say pass on, but if they were were mitmanan, that means that they admitted, had amen, and had the truth in spirit and in truth in the King of Kings and His Christ, and they are asleep. And the mitmanan in the Gita, we are to offer for them in our Beta Christian. What is the tabernacle? What is the Nyabingi tabernacle? They chant Psalms, so why don't they do the rest of this? Why do not Rastafari keep this if this is the teaching of His Imperial Majesty? It didn't say they were dead. The dead is, of course, that, that is the category 
based on coming from the world and crossing over as Ibrawiyan or Hebrews to the land of the living and the true epigenosis, the full knowledge of the King of Kings and his Christ, they are asleep. So we are to offer for them in our Beta Christian the prayer of sacrifice, which is his holy body and his precious blood to the King of Heaven, to Yesamai, Yesamayat Nugus. Offer it to say farewell to the one who sleeps. Pray for the one who is asleep by walking before his palaquin or his buyer, beer. You know what I'm You see that in ancient Egypt where they carry the, you know what I mean, where they carry basically the coffin, in other words, by walking before his beer. You know what I'm Here it says before. In the Old Testament, other times, some may walk after. It depends. And saying psalms, and saying the psalms. If he was faithful to Christ, that's a condition there, if he was faithful to the Moshiach, the Mashi, the prophet David has said, now here is quoted Psalm 115 and 15, and Psalm 114 and 7. So there is a word sound as well. You know so there is a teaching right out of the scriptures, out of the Bible, out of the glory of his imperial majesty. But is anyone talking about this? Is anyone saying this? This is so that maybe we did not know this in the past, but now that we know, we need to, to, to act on and, and to do, you understand, because that's what shows that I and I is, is, is called and faithful and, and chosen. So precious before Adonai is the death of his saints, his holy ones, Kedusanu. Turn, O my soul, to that rest. Return, O my soul, to that rest, for Avertu Yahweh has been bountiful to thee. Now it moves on to say, and this is an important teaching on death, this is the teaching, the true teaching on death concerning the Rastafari from, based on the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. Not all that pseudo-esoterical speculation that a lot of ones and ones out there, and then when they're confronted with the real world situation, ones freeze up, one lock up, one cannot, you know, cannot really rationalize or deal with it and, 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 and take care of the responsibility. So it says, those who Amen, or Mamin, those who believe, or rather admitted in the Gita, in the Adonai, do not die. So therefore, this conforms to the true Rastafari saying and teaching that I and I do not die. Because it says here that those who Mamen, or who admit in spirit and in truth, in the Gita, in the Adonai, in the Master, in Yahweh, and he who is the living one who lives, do not die. As was said by Adonai to the Sadducees, as Adonai Yehoshua, or Geta Yesus, said to the Sadducees in Matthew 22 and 23. Therefore, 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 therefore the the bones of those who are living in the Adonai are not despised or defiled. That's how a lot of ones, rasters and ignorance from what we reports that we have heard have dealt with other situations of the passing of ones and ones. That that these bones were despised in other words the one the dead one was like in the house and everybody was outside the house and had to wait until the Ethiopian like priest came and other you know, other local officials to really handle that and deal with that. So if we was in the teaching of His Majesty, we would know that those who admit, who have true amen, true admittance, you understand, in Geta Yesus, in Adonai Yehoshua HaMashi, that they do not die. And the te that was testified to the Sadducees by Geta Yesus. So we have, and, and this is our divine heritage, this is why we're falling short as Rastafari. And when these situations come upon us, there is not the ways and means to properly handle it and to really honor those those martyrs and former Kedusan and Isla ones and brethren and Mitmanan who are asleep, not dead, but who are asleep. So if and as it is acknowledged that our brother Bongo Rocky you understand, was admitting in the truth of the King of Kings and his Christ, 
If that is true, then he has not died. So there's nothing to fear. If that is not true, then may the Almighty have mercy on his soul, as on all of our souls, if it is not true. So it says, therefore, therefore the bones of those who are living in the Lord, in the Gita, are not despised or defiled, because the prophet Elias, after his death, made the dead man killed by the Syrian soldiers rise. Remember that? When the body of the dead man touched the bones of Elias, or Elisha, the prophet, he came back to life and rose. And this is in 4th book of Kings, or 2nd Kings, chapter 13, verse 21. This happened because the body of Elias, or Elisha, was saintly, or was caduce, and therefore pure.